Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and I am going to take you guys through the building of the Necropolis Stalkers that came to us today from the Feast of Bones. So for those of you out there who ended up with a sprue, you bought one online or at a local store and you have no idea how to build it, well, let me see if I can hopefully walk you through it. First things first that you probably need to know, as I snap this in half so it actually can fit on the screen, is a lot of the parts are actually laid out fairly close together. Shock of shocks, right? So you're going to want to look for parts, what is it? I'm going to say like the first six or seven parts are all going to be, be the first body. So like you have the core of the first model right here. You have most of the second one right here, ignoring all the extra blades and stuff. So you have the two feet. Two halves make the torso, the front of the chest armor, and a couple other parts I'll go over with you guys. And then the third one is on the sprue over here all by its lonesome. Okay, so that's just in case if you end up with the actual sprues. What you're going to want to do if memory serves correct i don't think it actually makes a huge difference which model gets which weapons so if you're worried about that don't be everybody can hold on to every part okay but first things first let's get those bodies built all right the first thing you're going to want to look for when you build these guys are these three parts this is going to be the lower groin section and then it's going to sit the upper torso on top of it and then this is the groin armor you have a kind of tailbone piece that's going to sit right here in the back like so right above the leg joint and then you're going to have a matching front piece obviously do the same exact thing in the front and I already glued one, so let me show you. I'm pretty sure, and I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that there's no, whoa, no real distinction between them. I'm pretty sure that they all match the same. Well, I can't hold it either. But you can see here how it goes together. Yes, I need to clean it up some more. Yes, I have glue everywhere, but that's beside the point. The next step is you're going to match up the legs and double check to make sure you have the pairs that actually go together and stand correctly. That's not that hard, but there is a little slot in there and that's going to help kind of lock the legs into place, sort of like that. I'll show you a glued version in a moment. And then if I could find where I put them, I don't remember now, you're going to grab the two pieces that make up the upper torso and it has the cloak parts attached as well. So let me show you all that and then I'm going to show you how the heads attach after that. So after you've got the basis of your body put together and you can see here we've been making some progress. We're going to clean it up a little bit more. The top half of the torso with the two tattered cape parts just sits on top of the previously built part and the next step we're going to do is we're going to attach the neck part which is going to sit in that space and you got to make sure that the tailbone fits right in I'm gonna wiggle that in and play with it a bit make sure it's cooperating and then you're going to take the chest armor and it does not matter which one you put but it's going to go right there in the front and then it's time to build the heads now interesting thing about the heads is that you have a ton of options so if you buy this second hand and you have a bunch of heads all off the sprue it doesn't really matter all you're going to do is grab four and glue them one at a time into a nice big pile there are four heads on each of the models so with that said, I'm going to finish these up. We're going to pop all those heads off, build our four-headed version. And funny thing is, we do have the parts to build the guard, but I have no idea how they're supposed to go together. So I'm going to hold off on those for now, and we'll figure that out later. So here are what the parts of the head are going to look like once you've got them cut they're just teeny tiny little pieces and what you're going to want to do is actually line them up in half so you're going to take all four of them and just to show you since i got one finished here and it's not the straightest but they're all going to line up in the middle and they all kind of join there's a tiny little slot on the temple of each head and i know this one isn't the best example i thought i built another one 
somewhere. Here's enough to make four heads. He's a little straighter. But they're all going to make like a end up making an indentation where you're going to attach it eventually to the neck. Like so. After that, we're going to want to build the arms. I want to talk about a couple of things here with the arms. So first of all, you want to know where the different sets are. If you have all these ridges going all the way down, that's going to be the arms that go with the dual or quadruple blades, I should say. And interestingly enough, each arm is part of a set and it's going to be keyed to each of the hands. So if you can see here, it has like a long oval, whereas like I know on another one I grabbed here, it has a little triangular indentation. So if you do get the arms mixed up, don't fret too much because you can identify which one goes with which based on the indentations. However, again, you saw how this one has these ridges going all the way around it, right? For the quadruple blades. You're going to see a pair, and there's only one pair in this set that has this kind of blank empty spot, and that's going to actually be for the shoulder pads, and that's kind of the boss with the double-decker blade. Okay, so that one has arms that are a little bit different than the quadruple set, so do keep an eye out for that. You can see how like on his lower arm here, it's fully ridged and knobby all the way down. Whereas on the twin blade ones, it's a little bit sparser. There's not as many knobs and they're a little less dense. So again, something to keep an eye out for. So I'm gonna go ahead and build up the set with quadruple blades and with the big honking one right here. Looking at the sprues, um, they don't have instructions on how to build the shield and halberd ones here, but I'm not seeing a lot of leftover hands, so I'm assuming that somehow these same hands are going to play into it. I don't want to mess with it right now because I really want the big giant blades. So let me show you what that's going to look like, and we're going to have these guys all done at that point, and hopefully we can compare them to some other models I might have handy. So here you can see our finished sample of our Necropolis Stalker. So, I'm sure a lot of people out there are wondering just how big these things are. And I haven't glued them to the base. And if you've watched this channel before, you know I don't ever do that until the very last minute, usually. And let's grab a couple models, and hopefully this die can help keep it somewhat balanced. Come on, you were being so well behaved before. Stand up. There we go. Okay. Let's not jinx it. So, grabbing a Mortrek guard, you can see him right next to it, a bit bigger, using our typical human standing in there. Again, you can see he is quite a bit taller, even though he is a bit forward on the base at the moment. Um, grabbing some other things we might have handy. How about an ogre? And while we're at it, how about one with the big honking blades? Oh my god, they don't want to stand. These guys really need to be glued to the base. I'm just going to keep fiddling with it here. Oh my god, come on. Close enough for the moment, maybe? But my thought was, what else are they going to scale up with? Because, I don't know about you guys, but I see a lot of potential for these things in other uses outside of just Age of Sigmar. I mean, obviously I want to use them in Age of Sigmar, but... Where else could I possibly use it? So, my first thought, oh, yeah, yeah. and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, if my hands can get out of the way long enough to show you, is with some Necrons. So I'm thinking with a nice kind of bluish green and silver, I mean, honestly, they totally could fit in, despite their vaguely insect-like protrusions on all their limbs, which kind of gives me a weird Tyranid vibe, especially the ivory guys they have in that sub-faction with the kind of white and red, um, you know, hive fleet look to them. Oh my god, this is making me crazy. Just stand for a little bit, dude, please. I don't want to glue you yet. It also reminded me of the Brutes from Conquest, but 
they're a little bit bigger. But then again, in their defense, you know, the scale in Conquest is a bit larger as well. Grabbing a Traga, who I had handy. Always seems to be here. About the same size. Obviously, our Necropolis Stalker is a bit more lithe and, you know, free of muscles. But putting some Marines next to them, going to be a bit more diminutive. I almost want to say it would be fun to have it in, like, Blackstone Fortress with the whole, um, you know, I forget what those things are called. Not the slivers, but the, the weird little... You know, skinny things that run around. Okay, I'm rambling. Anyway, I think there is a lot of untapped ability for these models to get a hold of on the table. And I haven't even tried messing with the whole optional build with the halberds and shields as well. I mean, obviously, if you know me, I have a thing for extra limbs on a model as it is. So this was just like, oh yeah, we got to have that. Multiple heads, multiple arms, absolutely. So... Hopefully you have found this helpful and informative, and hopefully you are going to be getting some of these stalkers up and running just as quickly as I am, hopefully. And I would love to see what you guys do with the paints, because I am trying to figure out, after looking online and looking in the book, and not seeing many examples yet, so some of us are going to have to start sending it. With that said, this is High Lord Tamberling with Obscurities and Miniatures, and hopefully you guys have found this useful, and hopefully you will be back for more videos in the future. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.